Today's focus is manifestations of the Holy Spirit. That can sound intimidating, but truly it is not. A manifestation is simply a visible expression of something you cannot outright see. The Bible repeatedly teaches that those who believe in Jesus Christ receive the Holy Spirit. For example, 2 Corinthians 1.22 says, God has put His Spirit in our hearts. 2 Timothy 1.14 says the Holy Spirit lives in us. If you are a believer, the Holy Spirit lives in you. You cannot see the Holy Spirit inside you, but you can see manifestations of that Spirit. Manifestations of the Holy Spirit are outward displays of the inward working of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers. The Holy Spirit is evidenced in the fruit of the Spirit displayed on Christians, as we have already studied. It is also evidenced, as we will talk about today, as Christians put into practice the various gifts given by the Spirit. Turn to 1 Corinthians 12. In this chapter, the Apostle Paul writes to the church at Corinth about gifts of the Spirit. I encourage you to read the entire chapter if you haven't, but look now at verses 4 through 7. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. The spiritual gifts or manifestations of the Holy Spirit that Paul references are quite varied, and per this scripture, they encompass different kinds of gifts, service, and working. But the source of all is the one triune God, the same Spirit, the same Lord, the same God at work. One reason this topic can be intimidating is that there are differing listings of gifts in Scripture. Look at verses 8 through 10. In this Scripture, Paul lists several manifestations. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge, to another faith, <laughs> to another gifts of healing, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. Note that Paul uses the terms manifestation and gifts along with service and working interchangeably in 1 Corinthians 12. The specific manifestations Paul lists here are examples of spiritual gifts that were especially needed in the early church. The list is not exhaustive, other scriptures reference differing spiritual gifts. I've listed all scripture references for these listings on your handout. We won't take time to look them up now, though you may want to do that on your own. But you can see at a glance the varied examples of gifts and giftedness, which includes apostles, pastors, evangelists, prophets, and teachers, miracles, healing, helping, guidance, different kinds of tongues, serving, teaching, encouraging, giving, leading, showing mercy, speaking, and serving. It is a very broad range. So while specific examples of the Spirit's manifestations differ, there are three points from 1 Corinthians 12 that we will focus on today. All people who are in Christ are given manifestations of the Spirit, all manifestations of the Holy Spirit are given for the common good. All manifestations of the Holy Spirit work in concert like parts of the body. So taking these point by point. First, all people who are in Christ are given manifestations of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given. That includes each one of you. Listings of spiritual gifts from the third bullet show the very broad spectrum of possibilities. Another reason this topic can be intimidating is that some specific gifts that were prevalent in the early church are foreign to many of our experiences. 
For example, we don't see widespread displays of healings and miraculous powers like those performed first by Jesus and then by his apostles in the early church era. And even then, as Paul clarifies in 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 30, these more dramatic gifts were sparingly dispersed. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? Your gifts may fall under less visible but oh-so-important categories like serving, encouraging, giving, or showing mercy. With that in mind, question one, in what ways is the work of the Spirit currently displayed in your life? What unique kinds of gifts, service, and working has the Spirit given you? The second point is that all manifestations of the Spirit are given for the common good. We learned in session 4.1 that the Holy Spirit's first ministry is to bring forth the church. Then in 4.2, that by the same Spirit, the church is kept and matured, prepared for heaven. Manifestations of the Spirit are gifts the Spirit distributes to believers to participate in His ministry. Glance again at those spiritual gifts listed in the third bullet. Question 2, how do various gifts lifted in, listed in Scripture promote the work of the Holy Spirit to build, keep, and mature Christians who make up the body of Christ? And then the third point, all manifestations work in concert like parts of the body. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27, the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Spirit, compares the Spirit's distribution of gifts to the complex, intertwined workings of human body parts, which God, in fact, has placed in the body, every one of them, just as He wanted them to be. So I would ask you to read this scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27, aloud in your group, and then discuss questions three and four. Question three, how do you see this analogy at work in your local church through yourself and others? Question four, how does this divine arrangement free believers as they exercise their individual gifts from common pitfalls of comparison, which may lead to feelings of inadequacy, or competition, which may stir jealousy. So take a moment now to read that scripture and then answer questions three and four. My friends, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. God has placed each of you, every one of you, just as he wanted you to be. Pray over and reflect on the gifts the Spirit has given you. Ask the Spirit to give you joy and confidence in exercising these gifts. If you aren't sure of your gifts, pray for discernment. And ask those beside you. They may recognize giftedness that you overlook or underrate. While we cannot see the Holy Spirit inside, the Holy Spirit is made manifest in the church as each believer exercises for the common good the specific gifts the Spirit has graciously distributed.